Welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to take the items that we made in the last video and scan them into your computer and then put them into an image processing program so that we can then get them into AnyRail. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is that I'm going to be going back and forth between microphones. I'll be using my Shure SM7 on some things and a Sony lavalier on others, so the audio quality is going to change between segments. So just uh, put up with me on that one. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to open the software for our scanner. In this case, I'm using my PlusTech OpticSlim 1180. So let's go get that. Let's open that up. And here it is. Now, this is the interface for my scanner. I have no idea what kind of scanner you have or what your software is going to look like, but I'll show you some basic stuff here and maybe it will transfer over into what you have. So as you can see, I can do quite a few things here. I can scan, I can email, I can do optical character recognition scans, and I can do direct to PDF through this software. But what we want to do is we just want to set it up as a scan utility just to get an image out of it. And that's what I have up here. I just have it set to scan utility. Now, when I scan my image, I want it to save into my folder, but at the same time, I want it to start an application. So in my case, I have it set to start PaintShop Pro 2020. So when the scan is done, it will save a copy of it and then it will open PaintShop Pro for me. So now we need to decide where we're going to save our scan. So we'll go to Save Setup and here it says Saving Folder. So we'll click on that and browse it. And as you can see, I already have it set to go into Video 18. And I have a subfolder here for Video 18 and for my demonstration scan. So I have it set going to there. So we'll hit OK. And then down here, it says numbering scheme. And this may be different for yours, but for me, I like to start my scans with one when I start a new project. So I make sure that I put in one and then I hit OK. Now, when I'm scanning schematics and catalogs and track plans, I like to do everything at 300 DPI. That gives me enough detail that I can really zoom in on things. It creates a larger file, but the uh, it's well worth it. I also have it set to max scan area, and that means it's just going to scan the entire surface of the scanner bed. And I think that, for, you know, usually for what you're doing, I think that's best. I also have it set to auto crop, and that means that when, after you scan, the software will automatically crop your image and take out anything that isn't your image. Now, sometimes it doesn't work properly and you have to crop it in your image processing program, but most of the time it works well for me. Now, one thing I leave off you might want to put on is the auto de-skew. De-skew straightens your image if you have it in the scanner bed at a slight angle and it will automatically straighten it for you. But I found that sometimes I don't like what it does to the image, so I always leave that off. And if I have to rotate the image slightly, I'll just do it in PaintShop Pro. Brightness, contrast, gamma, and threshold, that's up to you. You're going to have to set your scanner for the best settings. The settings I have here might be a little dark for our track plans, but it works really well for when I'm scanning manuals and catalogs. Okay, so after we have all that set up, we come down here and we hit Apply. And then we hit OK. And now we're ready to make our first scan. Okay, so we're ready to scan the images that we printed out. And here they are, but we're only going to scan one of them because to do all of them would be just a little bit too much. And the one we're going to do is the uh, Georgia Northeastern. So we're going to use the Optic Slim 1180. We'll open it up. Now, I know a lot of you probably already know how to do this, but I'm going to go over it anyway for people who might be new to scanners. Place your image in there. And a lot of times there will be an arrow to point to the corner that you want to put your, the edge of your paper to. And in this case, the arrow is right here. Make sure it's lined up against the edges. We'll close it down. Hello, Katie. And we will press scan and hopefully everything will go okay. There we go. Now back here on the screen, you can see that it has opened up the scan box and it's scanning. And since we are having the scan not only saved, but sending it to our image processing program, it's now opening PaintShop Pro. 
and there's our image ready for us to work on it. Okay, let's turn our attention to getting a scan from a book or a magazine. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that the magazines have changed how they print their track plans, at least Model Railroader has, and I think it's a change for the better. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have an old book here. This is uh, Railroads You Can Model. It's from 1976, and I chose a track plan for our demos out of this book. And here it is right here, and I don't know if you can see this. I'll put up a, uh, I'll put up a still of it. But this track plan runs across two pages, and you'll notice that it's a little bit offset between the pages. So when you scan this and try and put it into any rail, you're going to have problems with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan this one, and then I'm going to show you how to cut it apart and put it back together into one image that is straight. Also, you're going to lose a little bit of information along this edge, too because the pages don't quite line up, but that loss of information is not really a big deal. Now, let me show you what they're doing now. I don't need you. Nowadays, at least in Model Railroader, they're splitting up that image, and you'll see that it's half of it is on one page, the other half is on the other page, and there's little arrows that show you how to put the image back together. So I think this is a good idea, and we'll show you how to get this one as well. Another thing I'm going to show you is when you take a magazine or a book and you place it on your scanner bed, you will sometimes get a dark line right down the middle of the spine there. And I have a couple of ways to get rid of that, so we'll go over that as well. I'll give you a demonstration of that. So let's go ahead and let's get started on scanning from a magazine or a book. Okay, so let's try scanning from our book and our magazine. Now, before we get started, a couple things. First thing I like to do is I like to clean the scanner bed. And this is just a cleaning cloth that you can get, you know, for like your glasses or for a computer screen. And I wipe down the scanner bed. I occasionally clean it with um, uh, Windex, but uh, for most things, I just wipe it down because this wouldn't affect, really affect what you're doing, but uh, for me, when I'm doing a big manual or a big catalog, there's nothing more annoying than getting it all scanned, getting it in the computer, start editing it, and then finding that there's a cat hair right in the middle of every single page. And usually it's from this guy right here. So I like to clean the scanner bed. The other thing that you'll find that will be handy to have is a roll of blue tape. And you'll notice that two pieces of blue tape have magically appeared here, and I'll explain why when we start scanning. So let's move the camera and let's uh, start scanning the book and the magazine. Now we'll try and get our first scans from the book. And we'll use uh, the book Railroads You Could Model. So let's open it up to the page that we want. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this page, pull it back a little bit. And I'm going to use the fact that I have this folded back so that I can line up my book right to the edge of my scanner. Just like that. Now this is where the blue tape comes in handy. The nice thing about the blue tape, I have, a pe I have part of it folded back here to make a little handle. The nice thing about the blue tape is it comes off very easily. And I've used this on manuals that are 60, 70 years old, and I haven't ripped that paper. So the blue tape works really good, and it holds your image in place. So let's just put that in there like that. Now, a lot of times, if you check over on this side, you will find that it isn't lining up with the edge. But what happens is when you push down, it will push it back over to the edge, and you should be okay. Now, let's scan this way. Most people will scan it. You put the top down, and you think you're ready to go. We'll hit the scan button. 
and we'll see what happens. So here's our image as it comes out of the scanner and opens up in PaintShop Pro. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to rotate this image. So we'll just rotate it that way. Now you'll note that I had it scan the entire scanner bed. And this is how the auto crop works. It actually cropped it fairly well. Now this over here are the other pages in the book and we will get rid of those eventually. So let's take a closer look at this guy. And as you can see, we have this dark line running down the middle here. And that's because when we closed the lid, it didn't put enough pressure on the book to flatten it properly. Now this image is perfectly usable. You could use this image and not have any problems. But um, I kind of don't like having that line there. And you'll also notice that here and here and down here, it is offset. And I mentioned earlier about losing information. And here's a good example of it right here. You'll notice that this tank is not only offset, but if you put the two pieces together, it wouldn't form a circle. It would form an ellipse. So, so on older things like this, you're going to lose some information. Now, you're not losing a lot of information, so I don't think that's going to be a problem for you. So let's try something else and see if we can clean this drawing up just a little bit and get rid of all this darkness. Now there is a way to get rid of this darkness and I can show that to you maybe later on. But for right now, let's try a different way of scanning. So now I'll try another method that should get rid of that line down the middle. And what you do is keep it like this and we're just going to press. Here's the middle of the book. We're just going to press on it like this. So let's scan it again. This time I'll put some pressure onto the lid. Okay, and here's what it looks like when we apply pressure to the lid. Let's rotate it and let's make it a little larger. And you'll see that we got rid of a lot of that dark line down the middle, but you can still see some there. And again, as you can see, this scan is perfectly usable. So let me show you the way that I really like when I have an annoying line down the middle. And this gets rid of it 99% of the time. I have two pieces of foam core. I have a black piece and I have a white piece. And the reason is, is sometimes uh, you can see through the scan that the paper might be thin. So I put a backing on there. So what I do is, and we're gonna use the black one for this demonstration. So I open up the scanner and I place my foam core on top of that. Now, I want to make sure that when I press down on my foam core, I am pushing this ridge that way. I don't want to push it towards my blue tape. I want to push it that way. So I place it down and I just sort of work my hands back a little bit so that I know that it's been pushed down. It might be off a little bit over here, and if it is, you can add another piece of tape, but I'm not going to do that for this demo. Then, while I've got my fingers on it like this, put my hands flat, and I start my scan. And then I watch the edge, and I can see where the scanner head is. I can see the little light moving. And I move my hands along with that scanner head, and I put the palms of my hands where the scanner head is. And that really smashes the binding down. And let's see how that came out. Now, let's take a look at the scan when we we're using the foam core to press down on the book. So at first glance, it looks pretty clean along here. Let's rotate it. Let's zoom in on it. And you'll notice it's now nice and clean along the edge. So you can see why I like using that foam core method when I'm scanning a book, because it really presses down on the spine and allows you to get a nice clean scan out of it. Okay, let's do the model railroader real fast. 
So I'll peel off my tape. You kind of want to peel away. You kind of want to peel towards the edge of the magazine. And that seems to protect the paper. So let's peel that off. Let's grab our magazine. Now this is the one that has the drawing on two separate pages. So we'll do the same thing again. Bring it back. Put that in the center. Rub it down so it holds really good. Then I think what I'm going to do on this one, because I told you you can do it this way, is I am going to tape this side. So I'll smash the binding a little bit, put some pressure onto the paper, put my tape on. Take my black foam core, put it on, work it a little bit that way so I know everything is lying flat and we'll hit scan. Now you don't want to put so much pressure that you're going to be afraid that you're going to break the scanner bed. After a while you get the idea of how much pressure you need. And let's take a look at this one. Okay, here's our scan and you'll notice right off that there's a lot of garbage right in here. So let's rotate it and let's magnify it. And you can see that there are what look to be wrinkles in here. Now I mentioned the foam core works about 99% of the time and this is going to be the 1% of the time that it doesn't work the way you really want it to. And looking at the magazine, I can see a couple reasons why this happened. First of all, this is very thin magazine paper, so it wrinkles quite easily. Secondly, down here, the staple is actually through the paper on this side, so it's kind of pushing it away from the scanner bid. And then up here, this, again, the staples are right there, and they're like right underneath this page. In fact, this page over here is one page past the center of the magazine. So you've got these staples here, and there's no way you can smooth those staples out. They're just going to hit the scanner bed, and they're going to do this. But other than that, this is a nice scan. And when we cut it and put it together, we can remove this garbage out here and clean it up. And I'll show you how to do that when we edit the image. But for right now, I think we're done with scanning. Okay, one more thing before we go and get back to our computer and start editing those images. Now, some of you are going to look at this and you're going to say, well, why go through all of that and pressing on the scanner and all this kind of stuff? That's kind of silly. Why not just take the staples out of the book? And that is a very, very good option. Uh, I have done that many times on catalogs and manuals that just prove impossible to get a good scan on either using uh, this scanner or the optic book. The problem is if it's a um, book that you want to keep or a magazine that you want to keep, then you've got to put it back together. And let me tell you, if you just start sticking the staples through and putting the pages on, it takes forever. Now, one thing I did, and you probably don't have to do this for, you're only going to be scanning one thing, but uh, for a lot of my work, I went out and I bought this. This is a stapler that will handle an open book or an open magazine. But like I said, you probably don't need that. Okay, let's get to editing our images on the computer.